Chad Prather rose to internet fandom as the man who's unapologetically Southern. Keith Oaks is a published author who failed his way to success. Together, they tackle today's headlines in a way only a Southern Spitfire and a millennial mogul can. Take off your sport coat, grab a beer, and enjoy the conversation. This is Second Shot with Chad Prather and Keith Oaks. Well, as soon as we got going, the lights went out, and I thought (laughs) Zach was trying to cop a fill of me over here. I was like, where's, <laughs> where's that hand coming from? <laughs> what the hell? Like, come on, I'm just trying to run the board. <laughs> oh. Is that duct tape on your light switch? It is <laughs> duct tape on my light switch. Okay. All right, maybe there was something there. That's not that. creepy at all. Maybe, I, maybe it was a little pre-planned, I'll be honest. Welcome, everybody, to uh, Second Shot. We have a guest in today, Robert Halbert. Have you heard? What's up, Robert? What's happening? And we got Zach and Kristen. Hey. Hey. Kristen actually likes to uh, come in and, and grace us with her presence every now and then. <laughs> Um, the intelligence level went up a whole lot when she walked in the room. So yeah, we're absolutely. It did. <laughs> Thank you, Robert. Thank you. Uh, Robert's digging for he 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 must have did something wrong. <laughs> um, just for everybody who's new to it, what we do on Second Shot is we like to take some headlines or th- um, headlines or news stories or any type of stories really, and we want to try to take it and take a second shot at it on how we can turn that into something grabbed us to maybe from our experiences how we can help you in your business or your personal life or um, anything of that nature. And on the third segment. We will take any kind of listener emails at secondshotcast at gmail.com. Any emails, questions, you know, headlines you see you want us to take a take on, you know, send them to us. Uh, we'll bring them up on the third segment and, and talk about them. And uh, also, leave us a rating review. Share this with your friends. Uh, the more it gets out there, the more the message gets spread around. So um, we were just talking about how Roberto here um, – I just called you Roberto. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> you, you look like a Roberto, don't you? A good-looking Roberto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I got you like drink a gallon of whole milk this morning. It was about a quart. We've two quarts. I've it. never seen you a drink quart. just one quart. I've seen you grab two quarts at a time. Don't lie. No, a quart is the bigger of the smaller bottles. Oh, okay, it's gotcha. the second size <laughs> bottle, so it's like two <laughs> bottles. So oh, okay, it's so it's basically bottle. two bottles of it. Yeah, it just is. Go. Okay, there I got you, go. you, got you, got you. Um, hey, I, I've been drinking other things besides just milk lately too. So <laughs> yeah. Oh, I see. Electro hey, life, elect- life. Uh, like electrolyte drink. Look at we're, that. Like, where'd that come from? We're at Del Frisco's the other night. Yeah. And I ordered a dessert and I told the lady, I said, Hey, you got any milk back there? And she gives me this look like, What the <laughs> hell did you just say to me? I'm like, I'm serious. I want <laughs> who, who don't want some milk it's with some happening. chocolate cake or something? You got to be careful though when you order it like that. Yeah. Sometimes they, they only leave have it, it on the children's out. menu. Yeah. <laughs> they, got, they got Trace Leches at Del Frisco's. I'm sure they got milk. Oh, they had back milk. There. They had it back there. They yeah. put it in the last little fancy like water glass. It looks like a wine glass for me and everything. It's pretty cool. Yeah. All right, so Zach, what, what 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 headline we got first up? All right, first one. America's Got Talent winner Darcy Lynn Farmer has big and cute plans for a prize money. America's Got Talent has a new pint-sized winner, Darcy Lynn Farmer, the 12-year-old singing ventriloquist. Was ventriloquist? Was crowned champion of AGT season 12, and yes, she's still surprised. Uh, Judge Heidi Klum said she predicted Darcy Lynn's big win because she has the total package with her singing jokes and ventriloquism. Darcy Lynn has big plans for her prize money, including helping out at her church's mission program, and then, quote, I have to get my mom a dishwasher because it doesn't work and we need a new one. Uh, her Aww. final plan, getting a puppy. So, <laughs> Getting a puppy. I love that. Throwing the, like, like I'm going to get a Lynn puppy. Tell her to give me a call. I got a dog at the house. <laughs> Register and everything. Yeah. I called Rob the other day and he's like, I'm cleaning up. In, in all over the living room from the stupid dog we've had. And I'm Aww. like, well, Darcy Lynn, you want one? All right. <laughs> yeah. Santa Claus brought us that dog. <laughs> 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 I'm going to kill Santa Claus. Like, well, we have an English bulldog, which she's great, but then we bought my daughter a King Charles Cavalier Ooh. for uh, Christmas this year. Fancy. And you can have him. I mean, he is, he's almost a year Come old, and he, he See, is, he's as slow as Heath, let's put it that yeah. way. He's oh, very oh. special. I rescue a mutt. And that sucker ain't ever went to the bathroom in the house probably less than one one time I can count on my hands in two and a half years. Good for you, buddy. Yeah, so that's why you <laughs> rescue him. Now, her, what will you get from that? Now, I can't decide. Zach brought it up all ago. She want to get the dishwasher for her mom, or Very does she want to get the dishwasher so she don't have to keep washing dishes anymore? <laughs> that was her primary uh, chore. That's yeah. what's going on there. I mean, come on, she's 12. Let's be real, right? Yeah. Now, that's the other was doing the church mission, which is great. It's very sweet. Um, what, 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 what do you take from this? Well, I, you know, as we were talking about it earlier, the one thing I said was it's kind of neat to see, you know, even a, a younger kid look up and say, you know what, let me take care of other people before I start thinking about what I want to do for myself first, which mm-hmm. says a lot to me uh, from probably her, what her, the way her parents raise her even to the way she thinks, which to me, you know, always putting other people first is always going to, you're going to come out ahead every time you do that. That's really what, what I look at the most from that. And she did. It was in, it was in line, right? It was I'm a, the church mission trip. Next, she's going to get her mom a dishwasher. And third, she was getting herself a puppy. So it was truly 
putting others first, and then she's going to get herself a puppy. You know what I mean? Right. Um, and I, I, I thought about it, hope as well, right? Like, you know, the next generation. That, that gives me hope that people are getting, that, that our next generation, you know, having faith and hope in the fact that we got good people coming up that, that are thinking that, that she's on this big stage and she could easily get wrapped up into the bad things, but yet she's not, you know, and putting others uh, ahead of yourself. Now, what's interesting, Robert and I and what we do every day, we deal with um, – a bunch of independent thinkers um, that need to work as a team. Um, and we get a lot of times where it could be really easy not to put people above yourself, right? For sure. And, and on, a, on a daily basis, what do you think some of the keys, Robert, of, of putting others ahead of, like, other, like, like putting others ahead of yourself in the tough times? Because everybody always says, oh, I always put others first. But when it comes down to it, how many times you heard this conversation? Well, it's the principle this time. It's the principle of the thing. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stick it to them because they would do it to me, right? Like, I mean, but right. like, cause, like all the people, they talk the talk, but when it really gets down to the nuts and bolts and it's in its in its crunch time, they don't ever put others well, ahead. It's, it's funny you bring that up. Last night, I got a phone call from one of our guys at nine thirty, and uh, it was it was about an exchange on some some dollars and cents and. He was upset because the other person was avoiding him, and he really needed the money, and he knew he got the money that day, and uh, he was just calling to vent to me, and I said, look, you can only do you. You can't do someone else. In other words, you can get mad all you want. You can throw a fit all you want about it, but at the end of the day, putting other people before yourself, those people that you're talking about, that's why they struggle a lot, you know, because they put themselves first, and so people notice when you put yourself first a lot of times, and especially in our, in our world, People notice that, and they won't respond very well to you. Yep. You know, you stay on me a lot about, I mean, you're pretty harsh with people, but everybody that I work with will tell you, I put them first. Yep. So, that you know, they know that I care and, and that, I'm, that I'm there to, to, to support. But that's so. the thing is you, have, you cannot be both. I mean, like, you, you cannot be harsh and put yourself ahead of people. It never works, right? right. Like, like, if you're going, like Robert and I, our styles are, are a little bit different. In fact, I'm not as, uh, uh, I'm a much more of a lover, mm-hmm. right? I'm gonna love on you, <laughs> and my, and I and that and that to a fault at times. Okay, where I, I love on them way too much, mm-hmm. and Robert hits them in the face with the reality much quicker. However, the common denominator is the putting others first. That people still respond no matter how tough it is. No, no matter how much Robert can come in there and just, you know, I had one of the guys tell me he said as soon as Robert took over and he walked in, he said. You know, if you can't take an ass chew and we ain't going to work well together. The guy was like, whoa. And and he'll tell you straight up, but he, he can take it. Like I, one of my first mentors with Elena, when I took over, I wanted to learn from her the most was I'd never seen anybody that could go in and chew someone up and down and walk out and people go, well, I just love her. She's good at it. I mean, it was amazing how that happened. No matter what she did to him, she always, they always were like, I, just, I literally watched her grab a grown man by his ear and drag him up, and he deserved it for what he did. <laughs> and afterwards, that man going, I just love her. And I remember going, I got to go figure out how, what she's doing, right? Because yeah. like what I couldn't do is how, I, I never could have the tough conversation. And so what I learned from her was there was no secret with it. You just knew Elena genuinely cared for you. There was no question in that. She always put you first and she genuinely cared for you. And so she could have the ability to come and say what she wanted to and give you the hardcore feedback you deserved. Mm-hmm. And you not take it the wrong way because you knew she cared for you. You knew it was coming from the right spot. Yeah, and last thing I'll say about it before we move on is, you know, if you're that person that you don't know if you put other people first or you do, it's all about faith. You know, and once you start doing it and you start putting other people before you, you're going to see that it's going to pay off for you if you do it for the right reasons. And so I would tell but everybody But you got to have faith, there, though, because of what's, what's going to happen? It's not going to go your way. Right. Oh, no, 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 no. It never goes your way at the beginning. I mean, yes. the surface of it will never go your way. you got to look at the big picture, the whole and then my block just fell. I said it was going to. <laughs> <laughs> no, but anyways, you know, you, it's it's the big picture. When, it's the when, whole you, start, body when you start off doing it, you can't expect for it to go your way right, right off that. Well, you got to right. put others ahead of yourself. You got to do it without and, expecting anything in return. And those people opinion. will continue to screw you, and you will get left behind, and all these things won't go right. But if you stick with it, when it starts to turn, the good things coming your way will be so phenomenal that it will very, it will override everything. So you got to have faith and hope that those things will happen and come on. And congratulations so, to the young lady on the. Yeah, congrats. Darcy Lynn Farmer, yes. Thank you, Darcy. You're awesome. Mm. We love you. So, all right, we're going to wrap it up. We're going to come back to the second segment of Second Shot.
He likes cowboy hats and boots. And he's a suit and tie kind of guy. Chad Prather and Heath Oaks host more of Second Shot coming up on RNCN. Ready? Aim. Fire. Second Shot is back for another round on the Real News Communications Network. All righty. Welcome back to the second segment of Second Shot. Robert, you just had this done to like I feel really naked right now. I've had a watch, my watch for six, seven years, and I've never went a day without wearing it, and I had to take it in to get the, oh, that service thing finally, done. Okay. You know? And like I keep grabbing for it, or I keep shaking my wrist to like look at the time. And But here's what I don't understand. The amount of money we pay for a Rolex watch, we go take it in for a service, and it's going to be eight weeks, potentially, to get Six, it back? Six, eight weeks, yeah. And really? Weeks? Then, yeah. Wow. Then, then. I almost want to go buy another Rolex for the meantime to have one because it feels what weird What kind of service is happening? Yeah. Oh, you have to do on a Rolex every five years. They take years, it all apart. They go all literally little parts in it and every all little pin and everything because... It, like, co- it costs, costs as much to time. get one repair or service as it does just to go. Yeah, buy the service it. when I mean, they come back from service, they look brand new. You need to get a cheaper one for in between. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. But hey, I was I looked at him. I said, so I paid this much money for a watch, and you guys can't get you it done watch, faster right. for than eight weeks. It's really? Be, it'd be like taking your car and get a loaner watch. Did you? Did it really? Yeah, take they should have loaner weeks? watch. I think it took almost six. God. They should loner have Rolex. loner watches. They should Lonex. have loner watches. Yeah. Rolex, you should have loner watches. Whoever's listening right listening. now, yeah, start yeah. the company, if loner watch. And what, a, what a great opportunity to sell a watch because if you ran wearing a new one after after eight there weeks, you go. Yeah, be like, yeah. hey, you know what? I want to keep this yeah, one. Yeah, it's I just like, like this. The, what they do with the loner, sure. what they do at a dealership. Exactly. They, they always give them the, the step up here. but Giving uh, out great ideas every day. Yeah, yeah shameless plug podcast. for Rolex. That's how we roll. All right. What's our next one? The other headline, after Hurricane Maria, Puerto Rico, maybe months without power. Hurricane Maria has knocked out power across the island of Puerto Rico, home to 3.5 million people. Port, Porter, am I saying that? Puerto Rico? Puerto yeah, Rico yeah. Governor Ricardo Rossello described the hurricane as the most devastating storm of the century and said that Maria had hit the island's electricity grid so badly it could take months to restore power. The governor has asked President Donald Trump to declare the island a disaster area after the storm unleashed a heavy flooding and life-threatening winds and damaged infrastructure across the territory. The U.S. President, as of this recording, has yet to do so, but has made federal emergency aid available so what i what i wanted to get from this is obviously we live in a world with a lot of different countries so a lot of countries are standoffish it's very easy especially when you're an island i think to say we are isolated we are ourselves and we can handle it we mm-hmm. will handle our own problems this is a situation where a governor looked at his 3.5 million constituents and said you know what i'm in over my head i need a hand and it's interesting to see a leader do that, especially a, a, you know, a, a world leader, potentially, of a country, and, and say, you know what, I, I need a hand. I can't do this one on my own. And so I wanted to ask you guys, because you're, you know, you're leaders, um, when, when do you say, I'm, I'm, I've, I'm too far gone here, I need, I need help? Well, one of the most important parts about being a great leader is being able to ask for help. Like, you have to put your ego down and put your ego aside and ask for help. I mean, if it wasn't for the help I've gotten in my career when I needed it, then I would be dead to the world. Like, it, the, I had people helping me, and I was able to ask for it. Now, everybody has egos, but there's times you got to put your ego aside, and, 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 and you can't let your ego run everything. But I will tell you, you know, not asking for help is one of the dumbest things you can possibly do. I don't understand. We have people in our organization all the time that will be drowning, and we have to go, like, pull it out of them to tell us that they need something. Like... They want, they're like, I mean, their head and nose is underwater and they're still like, I'm fine. I'm good. I got it. I think pride is a big issue, but is there something else that you think inhibits people from asking for help? Uh, Lack of (laughs) self-awareness for sure. You know, you don't, you you think you're doing it. You're, you got it in your mind. You're telling yourself that you're doing it right. It's just not working. I think a lot of times self-awareness is huge in those. And the environment that you're in. I mean, we create environment of of asking questions and nobody gets slandered for it and all that and we still have people that will let it go to the right now i believe the lot of the people that won't ask for help are too insecure about what they do and do not know Mm -hmm. and won't ask for help because it's a weakness for them so the people that in my opinion people who ask for help are the ones that truly um are confident in themselves and their abilities because they'll ask for help people who are not they won't 
I've been there. <laughs> well, when yeah. Robert first started mm-hmm. with, with us at Colonial, like you understand, Robert's four years older. He was my brother in them's age, okay? And then whenever he started, uh, got him contracted. He'd never been in insurance. He, he was in car business for a long time. And, um, but basically, he was like, you know, he, he get to Dallas, I got this, right? And that was in September of 2010, by the way. Yeah, so uh, tell them the story. The, the, it's a perfect example of the asking sure. for help. So we, we, we came down, we opened the office, got the office opened up. I looked up at Heath and basically told him, you know, take your ass back to Dallas and we'll show you how it's done down here. Mm-hmm. And we got started. And that was in September. By November, I called him. I said, dude, bring your ass back now. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I'm about to lose everything I've got. Uh And he came down and sat down with me, and we spent a couple hours together, and I just listened. And I had no other option at that point Mm -hmm. but to listen. I had to – it was one of those transitional things I think I had to go through as a person, too, just to figure out, hey, you're not as smart as you think you are. You know, you're not not Superman. And listening to other people, and at the point where I was at, it was the best thing that ever happened to me because – as soon as I started listening, things started going very well for us. So, well, and, and that was an ego that had to get out of the way in a big sure. way because uh-huh. he's older. He was; they were the ones who picked on me when I was a kid, right? Like I'm the little the little kid. I mean, you name it. And he was very successful in the car business, so mm-hmm. it wasn't like he was. You know, he came from making several hundred thousand a year in the car business. So you got a guy who knew his stuff, yeah. but was able to put his ego aside quick enough to not go down too much further of a rabbit hole. Yeah, Do you I mean, think two weeks you later. Had to, sorry. D- no, you're good. Do you think you had to reach that breaking point in, in order to have that realization? For or, sure. Yeah. For sure. So do you think like that's that's a big issue with self-awareness mm-hmm. is people kind of have to reach the bottom have before to, they can... Well, and as a leader, you've got to realize it too because me, if I would have stood there and tried to go, no, you're listening to what Shut I say, mm-hmm. Robert wouldn't have done anything. Instead, mm-hmm. I, he said, go to Dallas. I said, okay, and I did. And it's I didn't call him. I didn't try to do anything. I just waited. It's yeah. one of those things we talk about, like, now with everybody's hitting those walls, you know, because there's going to be those walls you hit. And a lot of times we're sitting around waiting on someone to hit a wall. I was at first trying to avoid them with everybody, mm-hmm. you know. You can't protect them you from can't, them. Yeah. You just wait till they hit it, boom, and then you got to be there, pick them up, and hopefully they'll listen at that point so it's mm-hmm. and some people do and some people don't but the, that that's what you find out in the person if they're a hard-headed stubborn person or if they're an arrogant egotistical person for sure the hard-headed stubborn person will hit the wall and go okay i need help mm-hmm. you're right i'm wrong yeah the egotistical arrogant person which i ain't got to drop a time for is the person that gets back in and tries to hit another wall mm-hmm. and we have some of those too yeah <laughs> yeah but and everybody has their own but as a leader too you have to let people hit that wall. It's like protecting our kids, right, in today's mm-hmm. world. We want to um, not let them get hurt, so we don't want to put them on a bicycle uh, because we don't want them to fall and get hurt, right? However, the only way they're ever going to learn that lesson is to fall, scrape their head up, scrape their knee up, and you pick them up and then learn their lesson, right? Mm-hmm. For sure, yeah. Um, I mean, what, what, what else do you see in, in kind of in, in any type of personal or business-wise on the asking for help that you see is something that's kind of major? Uh, you know, all of it, really. I mean, even personally, there's things that, uh, you know, I can say from, you know, for myself and other people that I know that will call me on a personal level and say, hey, what do you think about this? You know, how do you feel about this? You know, I'm I'm very open, like, with my kids and stuff. I'm very, like you were talking a minute ago, you know, as far as letting your kids ride a bike or do things like that, you know. <laughs> you you got to let people experience things. They've got to go out and experience to, to figure out, hey, I do need help in this area or that area. But the people, you know, I challenge anyone that if you're in an area of your life or a spot in your life where you feel like things aren't going great for yourself, ask somebody for help. Make sure you ask the right person because a lot of times you can ask the wrong person. But don't be afraid to ask because a lot of times, man, it will it can change your whole life. <laughs> well, it's kind of like what you're talking about. Ask the right person I think is another key question sure. here, okay, because what you talk about is who, who's sitting at your table. For How sure. many times we sit in our life and – we let people sit at our table and give us advice, and we don't want to be like that person. However, we let them give us advice and direction in our life. It doesn't make any sense. It was what we were just talking about a while ago, how all these relationship experts are single. And I'm like, okay, so let me tell you this. If you have having relationship issues and your buddy who's been divorced three times is single, Probably not do not idea. ask him for help, okay? <laughs> you go ask the person who's been married for a long time that is happy. You ask them for their help and advice, okay? Too many times in today's world, and, and it's so easy to find out about people. You know what I mean? In today's world, you can Google and find anything about anybody. So don't just, you know, reach out there and ask for help and take the first helping hand because there's a lot of people willing to do it. You just have to be self-aware enough to ask for it, and you have to have, uh, you know, uh, enough humbleness and confidence in your own ability to go ask for the help. And speaking of asking for help, you can ask us for help at yes. secondshotcast Good at job. gmail.com. That was smooth. smooth. Yes. Dude, wow. that was smooth, Kristen. <laughs> and we'll be taking your listener questions in the next I segment. I love it. Come, we'll be coming right back to the third segment of Second Shot.
Now that's what I call ignorance on fire. More of Second Shot with Chad and Heath still to come. Kick off your boots or suit up. The choice is yours. Welcome back to Second Shot with Chad and Heath on RNCN. All right, welcome back to the third segment of Second Shot. Um, what we do on this third third segment is we, we take your listener, whether you got emails, whether you just want to send us something that um, has impacted you. Maybe you have a headline you want to send us that you go, hey, give me your take. Or you want just some advice uh, on anything that you think that, you know, we may be able to give you some on whether or not you take it. It's up to you. But um, secondshotcast at gmail.com. We will respond to your answers and questions. We will respond to anything on here. Gotcha? Got it. Are you, you going to send us a question next time, Robert? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. I'll send you a question. Oh, good. Right. Good. Yeah. You got a good one today, though. I mean, this is going to be interesting. Yeah. So, uh, well, I'm going to bring up the first one here. This is from um, Chris Marple. Uh, Chris Marple. Shout out, Chris. What's up? Um, Chad and Heath listen all the time. Never miss an episode. But, and of course, I want to read this because I want to feed my ego some. Because <laughs> okay, he talks about me in here. Boo you, Chad. Um, no, uh, but one episode I've listened to a few times was the quick shot that I did. Um, just want to let me know that it was a big motivational move for him and his business and to go ahead and get out of the family business and move forward with their own business. I've always had the doubt in my mind that um, what might happen um, with my father being, you know, kind of maybe being a naysayer of me doing my own thing. And so lately I've been hearing different motivational podcasts just saying get out there and do it. And I have to say your podcast has put the final nail in the coffin to leave my old business venture and family, start my own um, company uh, by myself. So thanks for the episode. Love you guys. May your lives be blessed. That's pretty cool, huh? That's really cool. And that's a tough one to get out of when you're in, in deep with family. For sure. And Because nothing's worse than the family being the negative naysayers in your ear. Like, there's there's not much. Like, Chris, I give you huge props because that's a tough one to walk out from, you know? I, I don't. I For sure. Because those are people can who I, do have that Can I give him some advice? Yep. And the only thing I'm going to say to you is, Chris, have no plan B. Go 100%, man. That's all I can tell you. Don't look back and say, try to save it to where you can come back to the family business. For sure. It's either this or nothing. That's it. So the next one's kind of interesting. This is um, uh, from Barton Heath. Um, I like his last name. Not a bad last name. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and he, he's from Idaho. My wife's from Idaho. I mean, he's got my last name. My first name is his last name, and he's from Idaho. He's a man. <laughs> uh, greetings, Chad Heath, Kristen, and Zach. Hope life is treating you all well. Um, so I'm, I'm going to kind of sh- paraphrase it in, in some, but he was talking about they're a Christian family, and he feels the full weight of responsibility. Um, and with all of the things going on in this world, he's a sole provider. Um, him and his wife sat down, and they come up with that decision a long time ago when they had their kids. Um, but uh, he started this new job basically to get put food on the table. Um, but since then, he works 50, 60 hours a week. Um, and he's never had any of the pay raises or promotions. Everything he's had has always been exceeds or more, um, but nothing has been like it was initially said. Um, now, he has an opportunity right now that um, uh, so it says exceeds and consistently work. 50, I'm currently interviewing with another company in Colorado, which offers a substantial sign-on bonus. My first year income with the company in Colorado would double, uh, and the second year beyond would nearly be 150% of current annual income, and he would be working less hours. Wow. So the issue is that my family is much more valuable to me than money. And I don't know what the impact of moving to a state where recreational marijuana is legal would have on my children. I understand marijuana and drugs are everywhere and tend to have discussions with my children about choice, responsibility, consequences. I just want to be a responsible father, husband, provide good family. And he sent a link to a article. Um, we can put the link in the show notes, right? Yeah, we'll, we'll have the link ready to go. See. It says how legalizing marijuana will hurt Americans long term. And it's a really long deal um, talking about um, the, the negative side effects of it all. And... Um, wanted to know what our opinions were on that and and how that would go hey listen in my most humble opinion no matter where you're at if you're worried about your family making decisions that are going to affect them that's up to you as the leader of your family to make sure they make the right decisions i think if you sat down and you did what we used to call the old ben franklin clothes and said what's the good at moving to wherever we're moving to and what's the bad it sounds to me like the good's well going to outweigh the bad. If the one bad thing you have is to look up and say marijuana is legal in that state, that's on you to raise your <laughs> kids the right way and make sure that they make great decisions. And let's all be honest with each other. 
quit lying to yourself and thinking that your kids may or may not make that decision. I can't answer that question for you. I've got three kids at home, too. I'm not going to kid myself and think they would never try it, bottom mm-hmm. line. You know, I'm going to try to not get into my personal opinion. Um, you know, uh, Barton, I, I, don't, I don't like to get in my personal opinion with some really political things as, as much. I just... Uh, I'd rather stay out of that arena. Chad would be the perfect one to get in that. He loves getting dipping his toes into that stuff. But I would tell you that beyond my personal opinion on marijuana and the recreational use of it all, um, I look at it and I, you know, I, I bring this out more than anything. It's going to triple your income and you're going to be working less hours. Look, working less hours means more time to be a father to your kids, a husband to your wife. And tripling your income means you're going to provide more things for your wife and your kids you know look legal marijuana marijuana is just as easy to get as tobacco and alcohol is these days okay and 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 a lot of people will tell you that there's uh, tobacco and alcohol are as uh got many issues as pot i would tell you that if you're going to be able to work less and make more money which means you're gonna have more time to be a father I, i believe do your kids have a better chance at making it in life if they had their father more or less whether pot was around or not legally, what do you think the answer is to that? They're going to do better with their father around more. So mm-hmm. I would take everything out of it and say, you know, that's your job as a father to, um, to help teach him what you believe is right and wrong. And they'll make their decisions as they get older in life. But if you're able to be around more and provide more, I have a feeling that now if you had said you were going to be working double and making more, my conversation would be different. Yeah. But you said working less. And tripling your income. Well, how can that go wrong? I mean, pot's going to be legal in five to ten years everywhere anyways. Don't sacrifice Don't sacrifice this, right? Yeah, that means in ten years you make 30 years salary where you're at right now. Don't forget that. <laughs> yeah, though that's huge what yeah. you just said. That's massive. On top of able to be with your family more. For sure. That's the most important part. What yeah. do you think that biggest difference with you? You went from the car business to this. And I'll never forget when you did because you used to work six day, 12 hours a day, six days a week. That first Saturday, calling me going, I don't know what oh, I used to pace the floor at my house and be like, what? And my wife looked at me, what in the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> I don't know what to do. You know, and I, you know, I did a little odd and end things just around at the time because we were trying to get the business started. And we weren't making a whole lot of money then. But, you know, family time, I, I have progressed over the last seven years into an actual father instead of just a glorified, you know, go to work, come home, go to sleep guy, you know, yeah. and mm-hmm. it, it's been fun. It's a lot more fun. It's a lot more work at home, by the way. So if you don't want to work a lot at home, stay where you're at, dude, because it's a lot more. I mean, <laughs> yeah, to yeah, me, I, I I'm agree. not, I don't know how much you're at home really, but you know, at the end of the day, it's a lot more work, but it's a lot more fun, a lot more rewarding. I mean, just like yesterday, I had, a, I had an appointment canceled. I got to go a day before I got to go eat lunch with my daughter at school. I don't ever, I didn't ever get to do those type of things, you know, seven years ago when I was in the other, my other career. So think about those things. I don't think that when you really get down to it is, is the legalization of marijuana going to affect your family? No, it's your leadership is what's going to affect your family, in my opinion. Yeah, I think it's kind of a no brainer. If you're getting more money, less hours, more time with family, more time with children, more to provide, then what's the issue? If it's environment, you can't shelter your children from environment. Like no matter where you go, there's always going to be things that are going to be trying to tear you down. So uh, all you can do is educate and motivate and you can do that from wherever you are. Well, the difference that we, we, we think marijuana and alcohol are different because one's illegal and one is legal. Now at one point, alcohol was illegal as well because of Mm -hmm. these same types of things. So, I mean, um, I would think what, what the conversation you have with your kid with alcohol have the same thing with the pot. Okay. But, if you're going to be making more money and working less hours, you have plenty of time to have that conversation, dude. You'll actually be able to have that conversation a lot more. For and, sure. and it yeah. sounds like you would be personally more fulfilled because it sounds like you, what you got right now is not bad. You're in a spot where this is the toughest spot to make the movie because you're going, it's not bad. You get know? out of your comfort zone a little bit. Yes. It's the hardest thing. When you're in the comfort zone, it's the hardest thing to get outside of it. Like, it's so funny how, easy, how much easier it was for me to make moves whenever I had nothing than it is when i've got stuff and you know mm-hmm. like like back then i was ignorant on fire i knew nothing i have a little more knowledge these days and so like it's crazy how um but i also have a ton of cash reserves these days versus back then so but i'm scared but but it's funny how that happens right you're not Comfort scared zone. enough i'm gonna be honest with you oh, when you I talk know. about you're not scared enough yet but I you're know, getting there but i but but i mean it's one of those it's interesting yet how that happens and so i would say that you're in a tough spot because you're in your comfort zone your job is not horrible you're not fulfilled i can tell you that your kids would would be um will be happier when they have a father that is more fulfilled. You're working less hours and making more money. So I'd say I'd do it. I wouldn't let the pot stop me for nothing. Fortune favors the bold, Barton. Fortune favors the bold. (laughs) There you go. Exactly. (laughs)
<laughs> so, Robert, where can he find you? They gonna find you on LinkedIn, can't they? Just LinkedIn, Robert I mean, Halbert. Yeah, I, that's all I can. I can't. I can't handle all the other social media stuff very well. <laughs> so you can look me up at Ignorance on Fire um, or at Heath Oaks Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. Um, look up Watch Chad, uh, Political Cowboy for for Chad. He'll be back in an episode or two. Um, shot second shotcast at gmail.com send us your questions or answers or anything love you guys have a great weekend